Today I'm being sponsored by Paradox to rebuild humanity in Stardeus. This game's a lot like RimWorld, but in space. Welcome to Stardeus. Earth has been destroyed. Your ship, the USS Florida, has been smackledorfed, but spared by floating in the atmosphere. And your consciousness has been uploaded to the CPU mainframe by an AI, in a last ditch effort to command the ship's drones to prepare the ship for the last arc of remaining humans. Trapped in stasis pods, barely protected from the hostile vacuum of space. The goal is to salvage the ruins, rebuild the new cruiser out of the bones of the wreckage, and create a self-sustaining colony on board the USS Florida, a ship whose residents are bizarre and have an unnerving taste for Soylent Green. After that, it's off to explore, fight, and find a new homeworld to rebuild humanity. I decided to get started by repairing the electrical connectors, anything that could be repurposed to keep our crew alive. Dead bodies were all over the floor and it was a general mess. The whole ship fractured into three sections to join together, and the whole grid separated. The main CPU had 10 kilowatts of power running through it, so I connected it to the electrical grid to open the current to allocate toward our few remaining systems, and I brought over two batteries and fabricated two matter reactors to burn, well, um, what, really, whatever we had most of. That meant, uh, steel plates. Yes, you heard me right. Burning steel plates. That's allowed here. We had nearly 3,000 of them floating around in the wreckage. I decided to abandon the old ship layout. It was too grand. I need something that would work faster. And I salvaged the wreck for materials. In the meantime, I repaired the main bridge and powered a winch to drag the two main sections of ship together. Bringing the CPU core closer to the stasis pods and the few remaining crew members inside, alive in the sealed life support compartment. I connected the dots and zapped current through the wreckage to the essential stasis pods, a womb-like shelter to the naked colonists inside, but it was unstable and on a timer to release one in just a few days. We had to get the room sealed with oxygen and up to normal temperature or risk suffocating anyone who woke up too early from cryosleep. Fortunately, temps were warm nearby and survivors could make a quick run to the adjacent shelter through only one airlock. But that meant passing through negative 289 degree Fahrenheit rooms. I prepared the way for the colonists, repairing cracked and damaged walls to shut out the vacuum and powering an extra heater, then researching biotech to start preparing meals for anyone who woke up. In the meantime, I filled out the ship's bridge with steel plate flooring and started getting organized with a central resource bank. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a storage pod dropped on the ship. A present? Or a, maybe a trap? Only one way to find out. I opened it, and to everyone's surprise, a man named Brian walked out of the pod and immediately died three feet in front of him because he was standing outside in the vacuum of space. So I decided that from now on, I would bring storage pods inside before I opened them. It turned out that this was not such a good idea later on, since I brought on a storage pod that contained live explosives into the middle of our living room, and only seconds before their detonation. I rushed to carry them outside as far as possible from the ship and barely saved our crew from an untimely and explosive demise. But that happened later. For right now, our ship was still a mess. I sent the drones to carry the repaired crafting stations and other pieces of useful furniture into the colonists' habitat, and I set up two workflows. The first one for the colonists, cooking meals and crafting components, and the second one for the drones, repairing the hull in the hostile vacuum outside, and bringing in useful components from the old destroyed colonist habitat for use in the new one, like the large planter, home to our oak tree, and the only source of wood. From there, it was a matter of cataloging the scattered plates and other detritus back into our stockpiles. Now the ship could take shape, like most spacecraft, into a vaguely phallic configuration. It was aerodynamic, though. In the meantime, new colonists were waking up from cryosleep and walking buck naked into the central habitat. They were completely miserable, so I began researching services like hygiene to keep them clean and recycled the bio-waste for plant fertilizer. Along with fertilizer, we became more self-sustaining in space, using our newly operational particle collector to grab bits of iron out of the skies. We used this along with our freshly built communications array to contact traders and obtain the fuel and other goods we needed to jumpstart our ship's thrusters into motion. We researched vegetarian food and soy burgers, and started organizing the ship into sections along our journey for power and research. Manufacturing came next before we reached our destination to fabricate our own microchips. Then we scrapped the rest of the ship we didn't need, exchanged with the trader, and finally set our eyes to the skies, the star system, the galaxy, and the whole universe beyond to explore. But for now, we had only one thruster 
which meant it would be very, very slow going to Seaburg, the nearest planet. That was okay though, because it meant all the scattered plates from before gathered along the exterior, stuck to the ship's floor while we were in motion. At long last, now it looked something vaguely like a spaceship. Or maybe just half of one, or maybe, or maybe just a drifting, floating platform to be completely honest. But it was our pile of crap. So our ship was operational. Check. We had a habitat for humans inside. It wasn't a very good habitat, but good enough. And we were en route to our first planet to explore. If we were going to start searching for a habitable world, we were going to require a more robust, self-sustaining ship that could gather and process its own resources. So I researched and built our first smelter, and placed it alongside the storage facilities for easy transfer. Then I started building up the front of the ship into a configuration that made it look more finished and polished. But now new problems were beginning to multiply. Where would we get our food if we were running out of protein? What should we do to address the ominous threat of space diarrhea and other health hazards? Could our shoddy electrical grid power us to find more renewable resources? Or would we burn up before we could grow anything and run dry on fuel sources in deep space? But for now, we still had breathing room, so I tried to ignore most of this and just keep putting one foot in front of the other. I finished constructing the ship, and then I researched cleaning bots to polish off all the schmutz on the ground. Our supply stores started yawning, but it wasn't without hope. Our new recycler could repurpose our feces into soil and water to create a sustainable loop of replenishment. A poop loop, if you will. We automated more of our crafting at our new assembler, and just on time as we arrived at Seaburg, freeing up our crew to explore the planet and mine for resources. Man and drone, side by side, ferrying raw copper back up to the ship. We used these resources to complete the hull, along with more sustainable solar panels, independently generating free electrical energy, powering more of the demanding needs of travel and research. We added thrusters, quadrupling our velocity through space toward Kelsey, the next planet. Meanwhile, we'd enclosed the main compartment, and now at least heat could spread through the entire ship, rendering it hospitable to human life. The spread of oxygen and insulation were making nearby compartments into new potential candidates for an expansion of our colonists' habitat, too. It was around this time that another stasis pod landed on the ship, containing a friendly man named Harvey and a dog named Blue, both of whom we took in and fed. But we were starting to run low on edible food stocks. It was then that I learned what, um, the protein that was in our meals was made of, right when I started researching nutrient extraction from the delicious bodies of our tragically fallen comrades. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, we had a lot of cadaver food. Food for days. It was the ultimate Soylent Green diet. Protein and soy burgers, both of which led to more space diarrhea. Painful, but also sustainable. Along with our new array of solar panels, powering our improved thrusters, we could ignite the engines and fly the USS Florida from planet to planet 12 times faster than before. So the next stop was Pluvius Donum, another mining site because we were starting to run dangerously low on things to throw into the reactors and burn for energy. Although we were running low, I used the last of the resources to set the ship in order. Ventilated smelters and resource collection, colonists' quarters, power generation, computing, and mainframe memory storage. But there wasn't much on Pluvius Donum, just a bunch of plant fiber for soy burgers. So we moved on to Galvarino and just started desperately hailing traders in search of a fuel source. No matter what we researched, propulsion, advanced manufacturing, the simple fact was that we were running out of stuff to burn. So it was then that I set out on nuclear energy, an incredibly demanding piece of research requiring three megawatts and 64 processors. We consolidated our power and then thrust it off in the USS Florida, roaming from planet to planet, scavenging for just about anything left we could burn to keep the research going. Prospectus, as it turned out, had all we needed to finish the essential project. Unfortunately, right as we finished the research, a deluge of meteors struck our ship, nearly knocking out the central computer. So I reinforced the walls and built a telescope to see future meteors in advance, as well as search the skies for a habitable world. Not that our ship was really complete, but that was our last objective, and I figured I might as well start working toward it. And so that's what we did. We researched nuclear energy in the hopes that someday we'd locate the uranium required to power our ship to great new heights, able to charge light speed travel and research complex technology at the same time. I researched advanced propulsion to build big bigger jets out of the back of our ship, pewing out fire. Dear God, those things were large. 
Then, out of nowhere, a mysterious green alien egg spawned in our cargo hold, and 12 cats hatched out of it. But they were friendly cats. But this is just tangential. At long last, after nearly three months of space travel, we met a trader with a cargo of uranium he was willing to give away. Finally. It was like placing the last jewels in the Infinity Gauntlet. One megawatt of power from each reactor. More than enough to power the research and pewing the fire out of the advanced thrusters. Finally, we could lay our power on researching terraforming to find a habitable world and send the USS Florida off with the speed of 720 kilowatts of thrust from planet to planet, harvesting all the power available in the whole star system. However, sometimes the electrical grid can, um, put out too much stress, even on two potent nuclear reactors. Unfortunately, this happened right when a large asteroid was headed on a collision course directly for our ship. I don't want to say that it caused the deadly vacuum of space to kill all of my colonists. I don't want to say that I um, noticed this later on because I was so focused on how exciting it was that we were traveling so fast. I also don't really want to say that uh, that was how, how the playthrough ended. What I wanted to say was that we terraformed a planet and uh, lived happily ever after eating delicious, nutritious Soylent Green. So I'll just say that instead. Anyway, big thanks to Paradox for sponsoring this one. Stardeus is in early access, and you can check it out with my link if you want. Thanks again to my patrons who eat my Soylent Green. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Until next time, my friends.